Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the official SAT study guide. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 731. Page number 731, and today is our lesson number 87. 731, let's see what they have to say. In the xy coordinate plane, we are told that L is perpendicular to y axis. Alright, let's make a note of it. Line L is perpendicular. Let's not be lazy, let's spell it out. Line L is perpendicular to y axis. So let's let's draw. Let's draw our line L. This is our y axis. And we are told that L line L is perpendicular to y axis. This is our line L. Here's our y axis. And it passes through point 5 and negative 3. 5 and negative 3. So it's 1, 2, 3, right here. 5 and negative 3. So the distance from here to here is 5. This is this is 5 and 0. If it goes through 5 and negative 3, it also goes through 5, 0 because it has to cut the x-axis somewhere and it's going to cut at 5 and 0 because it's parallel to it's, it's parallel to y-axis what the hell that's not what they said it's not parallel they did not say parallel they said perpendicular this is wrong this line is parallel to y-axis I'm not paying attention we have to redo it we, we, this point can stay here 5 and negative 3 can stay here but the rest has to go I almost picked up I was, I was on my way to picking the wrong answer because I wasn't paying attention. It says perpendicular, not parallel. So here's our point, and the line that we're talking about is this line, line L. It is perpendicular to x-axis. Here's our x-axis. Sorry, it is perpendicular to y-axis. It is perpendicular to y-axis. Here's the y-axis. Here's our line, and it is perpendicular. Finally got it right. What is the question asking? Which of the following, which of the following is the equation of the line L? Which of the following is the equation of line L? Well, in this and this line, line L, it doesn't matter what the value of the x is. When x is negative one, the y is negative three. When x is when x is negative two, y is negative three. When x is negative three, y is negative three. No matter what the value of x is, y is always negative three because that's what it means for a line to be like. Listen, they, they say perpendicular to y-axis, which is awkward way of looking at the whole thing. I'm going to I'm going to rephrase it, which is same as saying parallel, parallel to x-axis. If a line is parallel to x-axis, then of course it's per per perpendicular to y-axis, as we can see here. All right, this is our line here. It's perpendicular to y-axis. If the line is perpendicular to y-axis, this is our y-axis, and the line is perpendicular to y-axis, then it must be parallel to x-axis. And if it's parallel to if it's parallel to x-axis, what that means is that the value of the y, the value of the y-coordinate, is always the same, which is what which is what makes it parallel to x-axis. The value of the y is always the same, no matter what the value of the x is. In other words, x plays no role in it here. The equation of the line simply is this is the equation of the line. Y equals negative three. This is it. Y equals negative three. That's the equation of the line. It doesn't matter what x is, which is why x does not appear here. It does not appear here because it uh, x plays no role. Y equals negative 3, that's the equation of the line. Do you understand? And that will be answer choice C. Now the way the way I was headed, I would have picked the wrong answer because I, I drew the wrong picture in the beginning. I drew a line parallel to y-axis. I wasn't paying attention. It says perpendicular to y-axis. Do you understand? Now let's 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 change the problem and let's Let's see what happens. This is the correct answer. This is it. We are done with this problem. I'm changing now. I'm changing the problem. Okay, look. 
instead of saying perpendicular to y-axis, let's change this to x-axis. If it's perpendicular to x-axis, which is also means that it's parallel to y-axis at 5, 3. In which case, this line no longer applies. In which case, no, this line no longer applies. We are at 5, 3 here. And we are looking for a line which is, there are two ways of saying it, which is perpendicular to x-axis, which is same as parallel to y-axis. If it's parallel to y-axis, it is here. And of course, if it's, if, if it's parallel to y-axis, then it's perpendicular to x-axis. What's the equation of this line? Let's call it L2. L, L1 was the first one that we just did. This, was not, this is not in the book. What's the equation of this line? Here, what we're saying is that because of the fact that the line is parallel to y-axis, it's much easier to speak in terms of being parallel as opposed to being perpendicular. Because the line is parallel to y-axis, which means the value of the x is the same no matter what the value of y is. x equals, right here, x equals 5 when y is negative 3, x equals 5 when y is 0, x equals 5 when y is 1, x equals 5 when y is 2. It doesn't matter, x equals 5, x equals 5 when y is negative 3 million. Therefore, the equation of the, equation of the line is simply x equals 5. Y plays no role in it here. This would be the this would have been the correct answer. This would have been the correct answer if the question was asking us this. If the question has said the line is perpendicular to x-axis, the this answer would have been the correct answer would have been B, which is what they are hoping. They are hoping that they will find somebody like me who wasn't paying attention in the beginning, and had I continued with this thing, I would have picked answer choice B, which is the different scenario. Number eight. Question number eight. The daily profit, the daily profit P in dollars from producing and selling X unit of certain product is given by this function. Where B is some constant amount. This is called, this is what is known as the profit function. This is a relationship between the amount of units that, they, that you're selling or producing, whatever they say here. The daily, daily, the total daily profit P in dollar amount from producing and selling. All right. So this is your profit function. Okay. What this tells you is that once you plug in the value for X, however many units that you produce and so or whatever you put in the value of X, you, you crank this number and it'll tell you what your profit is going to be at that production level. So this P of X, is your production is, is, is your profit here we are told where B is a constant we are told if 300 units were produced and sold yesterday for a profit of 1900 so they're telling us that when X equals 300 Y equals 1900 and the Y is what I'm calling the P of X this is this is our value of the function so let's put, put it in and solve for B they are they're asking us what's the value of B so let's do that here so Y equals 1900 which is same as P of X, so 1900 equals 17X minus 10X plus B. Let's open the parenthesis. 17X minus 10X will be 7X, and then negative B equals 1900. And X, of course, we are told is 300. So let's put it in here. 7 times 300 minus B. And this is 1900. Let's bring, let's, let's, let's subtract 2100 from both sides. And this positive 2100, 7 times 300 is 2100, and negative 2100, they will cancel out. And we'll find that B equals, what it, what it technically gives us this, what it, what it gives us is that negative 200 equals negative B. But if negative 200 equals negative B, then D, B must equal positive 200. Value of the B is 200. The answer is, the answer is E. Next question, number nine. Number nine is a bit tricky one, you will see it. You will see it in a second. It's a bit tricky one. That was the end of number eight. Number nine says, the number that results when an integer is multiplied by itself. The number the number that results when an integer 
is multiplied by itself. Write it right down here. A number that results when an integer is multiplied by itself. This is a very verbose way of saying this is a very verbose, very wordy, very long way of saying. I'll tell you what, what, what I'm trying to say here, but let's first see if we ever learned the word verbose in our vocabulary lesson. I hope we did. There you go, we are verbose. Day number 16. Day number 16. Just type in vocabulary, just type in vocabulary day 16 and you will learn the word verbose, which just means very wordy, using too many words. This is a very verbose way of saying this, this entire thing. This is a very verbose way of saying a perfect square. A number that results when an integer is multiplied by itself is a perfect square. One, one is an integer when results. Listen carefully. One, one is the results when an integer is multiplied by itself. And the integer that we're talking about is one itself. One is an integer that results when an integer is multiplied by itself. Now in this case, that integer and this integer happen to be the same because it's one. Here's another one. Four. Four is a number. Four is a number that results when an integer is multiplied by itself. And the integer in this integer in question here is two. Four. Four. Four is the results when when an integer integer in this question is integer in question is two in, when an integer two is multiplied by itself. Here's another one. Nine is an integer that results when an integer is multiplied by itself. The integer being three. Sixteen is a number that results when an integer is multiplied by itself. You can see. It's just a very verbose way of saying perfect square. These are called perfect squares. 25 is a number that results when an integer is multiplied by itself, and so on and so forth. So on and so forth. Let's continue. Let's watch what happens. And then we'll have 6, then 7, and then 8, and then 9, and then 11, and then, uh, and then of course, 100. Let's see what they're saying here. You'll see where we're going with it. Which of the following? It says when you do that by itself, it cannot, it cannot end in which of the following digits? It cannot end in which of the following digits? Well, as you can clearly see, it can end in a one. When an integer, when an integer is multiplied by itself, it can end in a one. So A works. Can it end in a four? Is it possible for it to end in a 4? Do you see anything here ending in a 4? Right here. There is the guy. Here is an integer. 8 is an integer. When multiplied by itself, ends in a 4. So that is possible. Is it possible for it to end in a 5? Yes, it can end in a 5. 5 is an integer. 5 is an integer. When multiplied by itself, it ends in a 5. So that is possible. Is it possible for, for it to end in a 6? Do you see here any, anything ending in a 6? Right here. It is possible for a number, is it possible a number that results when an integer is multiplied by itself? 6, when multiplied by itself, we get 36. And the question here is, I'm going to read one more time. The number that results, number that results when an integer is multiplied by itself cannot end in what? Cannot end in, well it can end in 6. We can clearly see here, 6 times 6 is 36. So it is possible for a number to end in a 6 when an integer is multiplied by itself. Question is, can it end in an 8? Do you see here anything ending in an 8? Do you see anything here ending in an 8? This ends in a well, 1 times 1 ends in a 1, 2 times 2 ends in a 4, 9, uh, it ends in a 9, and a 6, and a 5, uh, all of these things. Do you see 8 anywhere? The answer is no. Answer is no. I'll show you why. I will show you why. I'm going to raise all of this thing because I need the room. But let's first make a note here. 
Let's first make a note here. No. Now that we know it's a perfect square, I'm going to continue here. No perfect square. No. No perfect square ever. No perfect square can ever end in a eight. This is an interesting information here. Uh, one does not usually think about things like this. No perfect square can end in an eight. For example, if you had a thirty-one, what what will you what will you get at the end? What will be the unit digit of thirty-one times thirty-one? You don't have to do it all out. You only have to realize that 31 times 31 will end in a will end in a 1 times 1. Similarly, if you had 42 times 42, that will end in a 4. Similarly, if you had uh, if you had uh, 73 times 73, it will end in a 9. Similarly, if you had 54 times 54, it will end in a 6. 4 times 4 is 16. If you had, you get the idea. You get the idea, 5 times 5 ends in a 5, because it doesn't matter how long the number is, no matter how many digits in it has, the only thing that matters is the unit digit. And we just saw here, we, we, we saw the square of all the unit digits 1 through 0, 1 through 10, and they end in a unit digits end in 1, 4, 9, and then we have 16, uh, uh, 16, 25, 36, 36, 49, 64, and 10. I missed something. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I missed the 9. 9 times 9 will end in a 1. 9 times 9 will end in a 1. But you don't see any 8 there, do you? It's not possible. It is not possible. I'm going to read one more time. No perfect square, no perfect square can ever end in an 8. It is impossible. The answer is E. The answer is E. Let's do the very last one on the page. Number 10. A bag contains only, only red marbles, blue marbles and yellow marbles. So we have red, blue and yellow marbles. We are told that the odds of, pick, odds of picking a red marble from the bag is one fourth. All right. And the odds of picking a blue marble is one sixth. Question simply is, which of the following could be the total number of marbles in the bag? Which of the following could be the total number of marbles in the bag? And the answer choices are 10, 12, 13, 18, 20 and 30. Let's ask ourselves, can, can we have total number of marbles? Is it possible for total number of marbles to be 30? Well, what is it that we are looking for here? What we, are, what we are looking for here, what we are looking for here is the fact that the total number of marbles, whatever it is, the total number of marbles, whatever it is, has to go evenly in 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 four and six because we are told that the odds of picking a red one is one quarter. We cannot have ten. You cannot divide We cannot have 10 because you cannot divide 10 evenly by 4. If you divide 10 by 4, you're not going to get the whole marble. And a marble being marble has to be an integer. So whatever the number of marbles there are, listen carefully, so what, what, whatever the number of marbles we have in the bag, that number has to be divisible by 4. Because these are marbles. They have to be whole number. When, we, when the nature of the problem sometimes is such that 
that the, whatever, whatever that you're dealing with has to be an integer. When we're talking about number of cars, number of peoples, number of boys and girls, number of toys, number of apples, number of bananas, uh, if, the, if the problem is states in such a way, it, it has to be a whole number. We cannot have three and, three and one-third girl and, and four and one-quarter boy. It's, it doesn't work that way. This is not possible. We cannot have ten marbles in the bag because we cannot divide ten by four. To say nothing of the fact that you can also not divide ten by six. It does not divide evenly. Is it possible to have eighteen? In, is it possible to have eighteen in marbles in the bag? The answer is no. Again, because eighteen does not divide into four. Eighteen does divide evenly into six. This is possible. This is possible, as you can see. If you have if you had uh, eight, eight, 18 marbles, you can divide it into six, and that would be possible. If you had eighteen marbles, then you must have three brew marbles because three times six is eighteen. It is possible to have 18 marbles if we did not have this complication of having the odds of one quarter or picking a red marble. That is not possible. You can't divide 18 by 4. Is it possible to have 20 marbles? Well, 20 marbles just works fine with 4. That works. But you cannot divide 20 into 6. You will not get the whole number. Is it possible to have 30 marbles? Again, 30 cannot be divided by 4. 30 is fine with 6, but 30 cannot be divided by 4. The answer is, the answer is B. The answer is B. B says 12. It is possible to have 12 marbles in the bag because 12 is divisible by 4, and 12 also happens to be divisible by 6. So, yes, it is possible to have 12 marbles in the bag, in which case, 12 divided by 4 is 3, so you would have 3 red marbles. 12 divided by 6 is uh, 2, so you'll have 2 blue marbles. And the remaining will be 12 minus whatever 5 it is, plus how many yellow you will have. You will have 7 yellow, yellow marbles. So that number is possible. 12 is possible. But whatever the number of marbles is in the bag, well, I'm going to read one more time here. Whatever the number of marbles is in the bag, the total number of marbles, whatever it is, has to be divisible, has to be divisible by what 4 and 6. And out of the five numbers, the only number that is divisible by both 4 and 6 is 12. All the rest are not possible. That's it. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.